Cheney McKnight of Not Your Mama's History and today I'm collaborating with Lindsay Mahullen of Loom Happenings. We're going to be making black eyed pea fritters. These are going to be the African American version, not the Akara that you find in Ghana or Nigeria. I couldn't find much documentation of black eyed pea fritters in the United States before the 19th century, but I did find a lot of evidence of black eyed pea fritters or akara making it to Brazil in the 17th and 18th century. So I can pretty much guarantee that it did make it to the United States through the slave trade. I also found two African American families that have recipes very similar to the one we're going to making today. The differences between African Akara and African American black eyed pea fritters are um, we have a lot more herbs, we put cornmeal and eggs into the fritters. So to start with, we are going to peel the black eyed peas. No, I'm not going to sit here and peel black eyed peas. Um, you want to soak them in a bowl of water about this um, about this big. I like this one because it actually has a little lip that makes it easy to pour. Um, and I filled this with the two cups of black eyed peas and I filled them up with water. And then I let it soak for 20 minutes. After that, you want to grab a handful of black eyed peas and just rub them together. And the peels just come right off. They come off fairly easy. Um, you'll have to do this between 30 and 30 minutes an hour. Um, so I suggest that you watch a bit of TV uh, and it actually works very fast. All right. And then you also want to have a bowl like this with a strainer. And as the peels come off, you just pour it off into the strainer and off comes the pails and you just keep filling this bowl up with water, um, rubbing them between your hands over and over and then pour out the peels um, and then refill it up with water. You'll know that it's ready when the black eyed peas are completely white. You won't have um, any of the black eyed peas that look like this one. Um, they'll all look just like this. Once we've done peeling our black eye peas, then we want to put it in a blender. I like to use a ninja type blender, but you could use the regular bigger um, original version. Um, so you want to put it in here and then fill it halfway up with water. Don't overwater it. And then you want to actually um, then. do is to shake it a little bit okay you don't want to blend it too much enough to kind of get it to a if you know a grits a grits type of consistency Um, so we're going to take the onions and some serrano uh, green peppers. 
I like a lot of heat, so I'm going to use one and a half of these. Uh, if you like the heat, put in the put in the seeds. That's where the heat is. Um, but if you do not, remember to take out the seeds. So we're going to put in the peppers. Going to put in onions. My family really likes onions, so I'm using a half of a really large onion. You can also use a um, small onion. To get them really really small some people hate to bite into a big chopped onion so continue and we're done with this portion you want to come over here and get it all out so at this top point this is where the biggest deviation from Akara uh, will happen. I put in a seasoning packet. I am using um, Golden's um, George Washington seasoning. Um, you could put in half a packet or even um, powdered chicken stock um, or any type of stock you like. So flavor is the biggest difference. Okay. I put in about half you want to give that a stir and you'll start to smell that now um, another big thing in any african-american kitchen would be Lowry seasoning salt so you just want to I would say maybe a half of a teaspoon not too much because we're going to already have a lot of flavor going in it Next, we have some black pepper and white pepper. You just want to take a pinch of that, put it in, maybe another pinch. It's all about what your family likes. That is what soul food is all about. What are you feeling? What does your family like? What do you like to go into the mix? And then um, you can use minced garlic, fresh garlic, or powdered garlic. I'm a huge fan of powdered garlic. I don't know, it's just um, the way that I was raised. We use a lot of powdered garlic. Put that in there. This is about a um, tablespoon, maybe a half a tablespoon. Guys, I know the heat is already in there, but you may want some cayenne pepper. Just go ahead and put a pinch or two in there. That'll add a little bit more color to it. And something that really deviates from Akara is the herbs. Um, we tend to put a lot more herbs in our food. Um, so I am putting a bit of thyme. This is maybe a teaspoon and a half. Oh, smell that. Oh, it smells so good. And next, cornmeal. I use yellow cornmeal, but you can use whatever type of cornmeal you, whichever one you want. Okay, this here is four tablespoons, but I'm going to measure it out with my hands. Just a little bit at a time. And then you want to stir it in, and you'll see it. You want to get a mashed potato type consistency. Oh, it's 
smell so good. That is going to be so good. heating up our pan and our oil I'm gonna put a bit of salt in this recipe usually calls for a lot of salt um, but depending on your household if you have any diabetics you may want to adjust this but I start with a tablespoon okay. to start we want to get the oil really hot um, you want to have bubbles but not too many bubbles because you don't want it to cook too fast you don't want to burn the outside you want it to be able to cook all the way through so I usually start with adding a test so once we have our oil tested and we know that it's good and hot we then want to take a pretty a good size spoon and we want to take a little bit make sure to stir all the flavor in we want to take a little bit and just drop it straight down don't make it too big because then it will break apart So you want to prepare a plate with a napkin over it. So after you're done, um, your fritters are done cooking, you want to transfer them to the napkin. You want to do about two minutes per side, but you can kind of um, gauge it by the way it looks. If it is it may get about a bit golden brown. So we have this on medium heat. Um, you want to start it on the high heat and then once you put the fritters in, you want to bring it down to a medium low heat. So we're done with our black IP fritters. They turned out so good. Um, they're very delicious. They're a bit spicy. So make sure that you guys put in the correct amount of heat for your family. Um, they are in this beautiful basket by Tangled Basket Farm on Etsy. Um, this was actually made by the specifications of Diane Schiffer. Thank you so much, Diane, for the basket. Um, and uh, Kateri Fahey of Tangled Baskets Farm made this. Um, it is the wool that you see um, is actually hand carded and it was hand spun um, using a drop spindle. And then you will also see braided sweet grass here. It's very, looks very beautiful. And then um, it's also made from wild willow. This is the wild willow you'll see. And then the handle is a great wild grapevine. Um, this is absolutely beautiful. I love all the elements. Um, made into this basket. I do not believe that it's period correct, but I have already carried it to the market. I got fruits from the um, from the market down the street. I also took it on a picnic. I've used it so many times already. So thank you so much, ladies. Another difference between African American black IP fritters and Nakara is that ours can be eaten without a sauce. So all the flavor is packed inside and so you won't need to dip them. If you want to dip them, you can use onion jam, jalapeno jam, or even a tomato sauce. I really like the tomato sauce. Also gravies. 
Um, you can also make them for appetizers, um, eat finger foods at parties. So good. Mmm. Delicious. These are so good. Mmm. <laughs> Man, I could really cook. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Mm. No idea. Mm. So good. <laughs>